Like a lot of gamers are pogging about the Microsoft deal. Why? Um, I, I think a lot of people are just, uh, I think they think this will mean better games, especially because like here, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to speculate on it, <coughs> um, they consider Activision Blizzard to be mismanaged and they think Microsoft can save it. I think that's literally it. Not recognizing that that'll probably like these kinds of mergers never lead to better games. But the only reason, the only reason why I think they think that is because Activision Blizzard is like notoriously horrifically mismanaged. And the Xbox subscription will now have like, or the Microsoft Game Pass will have significantly more exclusive games. But I think that's, that's it. That's the reason. They have Game Pass and want Call of Duty on Game Pass. However, I'm sure Game Pass is going to get much more expensive. Literally, the only time a huge game merger has ever produced better games is Square and Enix. Yeah, people have like an anyone but Bobby Kotick uh, attitude on the matter. And I think that's where it's coming from. That's... You guys are asking me why people are celebrating it. This is the reason. Which is ironic because a big part of the reason why Blizzard is no longer the Blizzard that you know is because of prior acquisitions and, you know, financial incentives turning a company that used to make art into a company that is just trying to make as much money as possible. But gamers don't think about it like that. They just see... They just, they just see it as like anyone but Bobby Kotick uh, leading the helm will make Blizzard better. And it could... We'll see. U.S. District Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley said in a ruling that the merger deserves scrutiny, noting it could be the largest in the history of the tech industry. But federal regulators were unable to show how it would cause serious harm and wouldn't likely prevail if they took it to a full trial, she wrote. The Federal Trade Commission, which enforces antitrust laws in a laughable capacity, has not raised serious questions regarding whether the proposed merger is likely to substantially lessen competition between video game consoles or in the growing markets for monthly game subscriptions or cloud-based gaming, Corley said. A ruling favorable to Microsoft was not a surprise after the company's lawyers had the upper hand in a five-day San Francisco court hearing that ended late last month. The proceeding showcased testimony by Microsoft Chief Executive Officer Satya Nadella and longtime Blizzard Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, who both pledged to keep Activision's blockbuster game Call of Duty available to people who play it on consoles, particularly Sony's PlayStation, that compete with Microsoft's Xbox. They also previously lied, I believe, about Bethesda releases not being exclusive, so don't know how well that will work out for all of the gamers that are celebrating this decision. It's very odd that, like, Microsoft basically was like, we lost the console wars to Sony and Nintendo. Okay, we lost. We lost the big-ticket consoles to Sony, and we were never beating Nintendo anyway because Nintendo has the market on handheld and they dominate um so i think uh who knows i mean i personally don't care because i also have a pc so i get to play all the microsoft releases regardless um so it's it's no skin off my bones but an older hassan or rather a younger hassan would have been very frustrated by this decision because i had an unrealistic brand loyalty to sony uh, that was deeply ingrained inside of my mind, my body, my soul, for no fucking reason whatsoever, other than I believe Metal Gear Solid, and even I'm old enough to remember Rockstar releases being uh, exclusive to Sony. 
Right. I'm so old. I am so fucking old that Grand Theft Auto 3 was an exclusive release to Sony. And for that reason, I actually never even played. For that reason, I never even played Gears of War or Halo. NVIDIA or AMD? No, I'm definitely an NVIDIA fan for sure, especially for what I do. The one thing that can unite the world is all games playable on all consoles and a new Kingdom Hearts with every video game character in it. Yeah, I love IP mergers. I love, I love video games that just like vomit out IP. Watchdog demands recusal of judge overseeing the Activision case because her son works for Microsoft. What the fuck? So what I find to be particularly funny about this incident is that there is a little bit of truth on both sides, I think, because this merger, this merger in and of itself, for the record, I don't know if it fits the, uh, the, the monopoly rules, like the antitrust rules, because companies have, I mean, this is typical... I guess it depends on what you consider a monopoly. Like, from the purest sense, it is, right? It's still a, a horizontal... Well, I guess this would be vertical integration. It's still vertical integration, right? It's vertical expansion. You're technically, as a console provider, as a hardware provider, uh, buying yet another software provider for your hardware. But in the United States of America, there are no antitrust rules, let's be real. Um, but even if there was uh, less strict antitrust rules, I don't know if this would violate them. Like the European standard. I don't know if this would violate the European standard. Wouldn't this decision effectively monopolize most of the gaming market and start to effectively price out regular consumers? Also, wouldn't this just... Uh, further corporations that use video games as a strictly investment vehicle or stakeholder gain only? Wouldn't this effectively start to price out regular consumers slowly? Yes. But that's been happening nonstop. It's been, yeah, it, EU approved it, only the UK rejected it. So that's why, like, I at least still look to, like, European regulations on monopolies, which are not great either, because the EU is basically following the footsteps of the United States of America, but, like, 10 years uh, delayed. <clears throat> so this kind of corporate consolidation is is the norm already this kind of corporate consolidation is already the norm and ironically this kind of corporate consolidation has been happening between publishers right so it's not like It's, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's, uh, what is this? Luke Stevens had a take on it? Here, we can watch it. Like, all of these other publishers and developers have been merging already, and now they're merging, 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 and now they're merging with, like, uh, uh platform creators or, or, or hardware makers as well the reason gamers are celebrating is because they have short ass memories and only see short term benefits until they realize they got fucked later on yeah that kind of stuff is insidious and it happens later Microsoft exec was ready to go spend Sony out of business to strengthen Xbox internal email shows Microsoft's early thinking on acquisitions to drive Xbox Game Pass growth yeah oh It makes, it's interesting because as someone who worked at Blizzard previously, I enjoy this guy's insight on the different dynamics and how it will affect the employees. I make four major points. Good for Blizzard, good for Blizzard employees, good for Blizzard fans, bad for the video game industry. 
Blizzard has not thrived under Activision in recent years. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, it's not Blizzard. It's Activision Blizzard, which means that, like, a merger happened there already, which made the fucking company worse overall. Okay? So, like, there is already that. Right? So... So that merger already made it substantially worse for everybody. So I do think that this is like people getting excited for the short-term benefits. Also, um, people do like, uh, what's his face? Um, people, people do legitimately like Phil Spencer, it seems. Like gamers like Phil Spencer. They do. They think he's like, they, Phil Spencer is like the exact opposite of Bobby Kotick in the eyes of gamers. For those of you who don't know, Phil Spencer is the CEO of Microsoft Gaming. Uh, Bobby Kotick is the CEO of Activision Blizzard. Everybody fucking despises Bobby Kotick for very good reasons. Phil Spencer is a very good mascot for Microsoft Gaming. He has had some really interesting takes both on Activision Blizzard, but also simultaneously, he has said things like, Microsoft has actually ceded ground to Sony in the console wars. Like, we've lost it. We, we can't do anything about it. Meanwhile, internally, internally, Microsoft seemingly is singing a different tune. Some Microsoft executives are trying to spend Sony out of business. Now, of course, that's a laughable concept. I don't know if you could spend uh, Sony out of business. That would be a ridiculous amount of lift and a ridiculous amount of money, but it still shows what their interests are. Like it, it, it still shows where their interests lie. Obviously, IP leads that battle, and Sony still maintains a lot of great IP. Um, so... You know, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the interesting part of this equation. Anyway, Blizzard has not thrived under Activision. In recent years, Activision has forced increasing cost-cutting measures and revenue demands upon Blizzard, which has driven many talented senior personnel out of the company. Activision's business model is to maximize profits, seemingly at all costs. Uh, of course, that's everyone's business model. This means an RTS title like StarCraft II or WarCraft IV will never be greenlit under current leadership. There's not enough money in the RTS genre. Microsoft, however, has a different business model. Microsoft is all about market dominance. They don't mind making less profit on a smaller title as long as you are either playing a Microsoft game or playing it on a Microsoft device slash service slash platform. Their ideal is a customer existing within an entire Microsoft ecosystem. This is true. Um, that, but that is also for profit. It's just longer term profit. But longer term profit by market share dominance is what Amazon does. It is the strategy of every big blue chip American corporation. They flood the marketplace with dollars. They buy out all the competition. They forcibly drive them out if they can. And then they turn around and create their own internal ecosystem. And as everybody knows, what ends up happening when you finally reach monopoly market share is you, one, fire all of your labor force regularly. Okay, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of just uh, moving uh, your workforce around despite maintaining record high profits. And also, you slowly start to increase the prices back. You cut the quality and you increase the prices or you engage in other revenue strategies such as microtransactions, DLCs, things that gamers recognize as like a bad thing overall. Things that gamer even... The most rugged capitalist gamer looks at and goes, oh, that's really shitty. I hate that. It's basically a race to the bottom. It is also part of the reason why the video game space and all of the major developers and publishers that used to make, uh, you know, incredible AAA titles every six years that focused on a compelling single player story that created a universe for you have turned into uh, shark card selling, money-making monsters that 
almost hyper focus on selling you cosmetic skins, DLCs, and also sending you uh, uh, video games that are not complete on release. Video games that are not working uh, perfectly fine. Uh, the moment where capitalist gamers start saying this is not capitalism, it's corporatism. Yeah, it's just copiumism. That's what it is. Have you played Metal Gear Solid 5 yet? Of course I did. What do you mean? I, I am a diehard Kojima fanboy, my friend. I played it on release. Um, Microsoft is all about market dominance. We already covered that. Uh, so is this is good for Blizzard and its employees because Microsoft will greenlight smaller passion projects that are not projected to be monetization machines. Will likely see fewer layoffs and support positions that are no uh, that are not directly driving revenue. Less pressure on the devs to make money. This is good for Blizzard fans because happier devs that can focus on making good games rather than making money means better games for us. Also, StarCraft II is a real possibility under Microsoft because Microsoft is already invested in RTS titles. Microsoft also doesn't exclusively maintain uh, Xbox profits. Microsoft Gaming also features desktop games, which means RTS might make a return. StarCraft 3, he means, uh, not StarCraft 2. But listen, listen, this isn't copium. I don't think this guy is wrong when he says this because Microsoft Gaming is not just Xbox. Microsoft Gaming is also PC gaming. And let's be real, RTS is almost entirely a PC gaming project. I don't know if there has been a successful way. I don't know if there has been a successful way to uh, create RTS games uh, that are playable, just as playable as uh, they are on the desktop on consoles yet. Okay? Okay. Even Diablo, which is not an RTS game, but it's still uh, isometric, is relatively difficult to play on a console. And I say this as someone who played it on the Steam Deck while also simultaneously playing it on the PC. So this is part of the reason why... This is part of the reason why I can see a bigger return to RTS games. Um, but, but again, I am not so... I'll just say it like this. I am not as open-minded as he is about this because ultimately this relies on uh, Phil Spencer's good nature and he is a CEO after all, so I will never trust him. Uh, ultimately, this relies on um, them having like enough long-term profit uh, interests, okay? And I don't know if they have enough long-term profit interest because... That's not how American corporations operate. American corporations never have. Even when they're talking about monopolization, they still are not factoring in long-term uh, long revenue strategies, long-term market share strategies. Why? Because they are still absolutely 100% under a fiduciary obligation to their shareholders. What that means is every single quarter they have to they have to justify what they're doing. And for that, for that reason, they always have to ma massage the numbers. They always have to be like, oh, well, we fired a bunch of people. Don't worry. We're lean. We're lean. We're a lean operation. We're more efficient. We're more efficient. Please, the number keeps going. The numbers uh, keep going up. Okay? So... Prices. It's easier for three big companies to collude, on, collude to raise prices $100 a game when they represent 75% of all games being released and 100% of AAA titles. Creative control. If big company doesn't want to make a game about X, all studios that they own will make no such game. Cannibalization. Big companies less likely to greenlight an ARPG from Studio X if they feel like they will compete with the ARPG they have from Studio Y. Less diversity. We end up with each megacorp having its own big FPS, its own big MMO, which hurts choice for consumers. Indie becomes the only recourse but it becomes harder for indie devs to get a budget or get picked up by the megacorps. Why fund new small ARPG studio when you own a veteran big ARPG studio already? This part is also true. Ultimately, though, the last three things that he just mentioned 
is the reason why I'm always anti-mergers. I'm always anti-monopolization. Imagine if Valve was publicly traded and not mostly owned by Gaben. Gamers take that for granted, to be honest. Okay, but you have to also understand something here. Valve runs on gambling. Valve used to be a game developer. Now they're getting into the hardware space, and I love the hardware that they're making. People love the Index. They say it's one of the best VR consoles out there. I am literally a personal diehard fucking fan of the Steam Deck. I play it. I use it more. It is my daily driver. It is the uh, console that I use more than the PC itself when I'm playing video games, right? But ultimately... <coughs> oh, fuck. <coughs> <coughs> Valve is run by gambling and Valve is also run by uh, being a marketplace for games. A cooperatively owned corporation that used to uh, have uh, one of the most notorious socialist economists out there, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, turned into a basic monopoly that sells video games and that's how they make their money. Valve does gambling? Didn't know that? Wait, what do you mean? What do you think the CSGO crates are? I mean, I don't know how much fucking CSGO crates are, are helping um, feed Valve, but that's, that's certainly one aspect. You saying Steam Deck is the kick of PC gaming? No, Steam Deck is not has nothing to do with... Steam Deck has nothing to do with, uh, with, with gambling. CSGO skins are a billion dollar business in and of itself. 